A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem. I seek refuge with Allah Almighty from Satan, the rejected one. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. By the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Sallallahu ta'ala ala habibihi Muhammadiyu wa alihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to our segment on Surah Al-Araf. Inshallah, today we will cover the second ruku of Surah Al-Araf, verses 11 to 25. May Allah grant us the ability to understand the true meanings of the Quran by the grace of his Prophet Muhammad. Amin. With this dua, let's begin the second ruku of Surah Al-Araf. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Verses 11 and 12. وَلَقَدْ خَلَّكْنَا كُمْ ثُمَّ سَوَّرْنَكُمْ ثُمَّ كُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ أَسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ لَمْ يَكُمْ بِدَّ السَّاجِدِينَ And we have certainly created you and given you a form. Then we said to the angels, Prostrate to Adam. So they prostrated, except for Iblis. He was not of those who prostrated. Qala ma mana'aka ala tasjuda ib amartuka qala ana khayrum minhu khalak tani min narin wa khalaktahu min deen. He said, what prevented you from prostrating when I commanded you? He said, I am better than him. You created me from fire and created him from clay. In the previous verse, it was mentioned that while those who did not give importance to the message of their messengers deny the signs of Allah and follow the path of disobedience, their scales are light and they are not on the path to success. This verse states, Allah created us and shaped us all in different forms. Then he asked the angels to prostrate to Adam. Everyone prostrated, except Iblis. When Iblis was asked what prevented him from, from prostrating, he replied that I am better than the one you are asking to prostrate to. You have created me from fire, while Adam is created from clay. The details of this incident have been described in many places in the Holy Quran. In Surah Bani Israel, verse 61, it states, And when we said to the angels, prostrate to Adam, and they prostrated, except for Iblis, he said, Should I prostrate to one you created from clay? According to Surah Sa'd, verses 75 and 76, it tells us the reason for Iblis' denial and not for him prostrating, where it said, He said, O Iblis, what prevented you from prostrating to that which I created with my hands? Were you arrogant or were you among the haughty? He said, I am better than him. You created me from fire and created him from clay. Arrogance and self-righteousness are the most prominent reasons for Iblis' refusal. He refused the order of the Lord in his pride and arrogance. Let's move on to verse 13. Qala fahbit minha fama yakuna laka antata qabbara fiha fakhruj innaka minna sawirin. He said, Descend from it, for it is not for you to be arrogant therein. So get out. Indeed, you are of the debased. A salverin means the debased, reduced in quality and value, or inferior ones. Iblis's arrogance and pride made him an outcast. He was not sorry for what he had done and never asked for forgiveness. Let's move on to verses 14 and 15. 
قولہ انزردی الا یومی یبعثون He said, Give me respite until the day they are resurrected. قَالَ إِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنزَرِينَ He said, Indeed, you are of those given respite. أَنزِرْنِي means give me respite, a short delay permitted before a punishment is carried out. يُبْعَثُونَ means they are resurrected. From these verses, we know that before leaving, Iblis requested a respite until the day of judgment to mislead the people of Adam. The details of how much respite he was given is stated in Surah Sad, verses 79, 80, and 81, which is until Yom al-Yabasud, which is the day of the time well known. Point to be noted here is that Iblis knows about the reality of Yom al Yabasun, which is the final day when we will be resurrected. But do we know? That's something to ponder. Let's move on to verses 16 and 17. Qala Fabima Agwaitani La Ak Udanna. Lahum sirataka al mustaqim. He said, Because you have abducted me, surely I will sit for them on your straight path. Summa la tiyannahum min baini aidihim wa min khalfihim wa an aimanihim wa an shama'ilihim wa la ta'khidu aksarahum shakirin. Then I will come to them from before them and from behind them, and on their right and on their left, and you will not find most of them grateful. al means abducted. ag means surely I will sit, as in sit in to block their way. Aymanihim means their right. Shema ilihim means their left. According to these verses, when Iblis was granted respite at his request, he revealed his plan of destruction. More details of the same are described in Surah Al-Isra, verses 62, 63, 64, and 65. Let's move on to verses 18 and 19. Qala akhruj minha mad'uman mad'huran laman tabi'aka minhum la'amla anna ja'annama minkum ajma'een. He said, Exit from it, reproached and repelled. Whoever follows you among them, I will surely fill hell with you all. وَيَا آدَمُ أَسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ الْجَنَّةَ فَاقُلَا مِنْ حَيْثُ شِيْتُمَا وَلَا تَقْرَبَ هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةَ فَتَقُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ And, O Adam, dwell you and your wife in paradise and eat from wherever you will, but do not approach this tree lest you be among the wrongdoers. Mad'uman means reproached or to kick someone out. Madhuran means repelled. The servants of Allah, about whom it has been said that shaitan does not have any control over, are called the servants of the righteous. Surah Al-Hijr Verses 39, 40, and 41 goes into some more detail about that, where it says, Iblis said, O Lord, as you have abducted me, I will surely decorate the earth for them and abduct everyone, except your servants, who are sincere. He said, This is a straight path towards me, 
Indeed, you have no power over my servants, except those who follow you after being abducted. According to verse 18, Iblis and his followers will be filled in hell altogether. Adam was told that he and his wife should live happily in paradise, and at the same time, they were warned that Iblis is hostile to them, so they are to be aware of his tricks lest he expels them from paradise. This is explained in detail in Surah Taha, verses 117, 118, and 119. And also mentioned in these verses is a description of paradise. Thus, in paradise, there is no stress from hunger, thirst, lack of clothes, and shelter. In paradise, you will have the blessings of eating, drinking, wearing clothes, and having living arrangements, and all kinds of mental and intellectual freedom. The only restriction is not to approach the forbidden tree. Otherwise, the state of happiness and peace will be taken away, and you will leave paradise. Let's move on to verses 20 and 21. فَوَسْوَسَ لَهُمَا أَشَيْتَانُ لِيُبْدِيَا لَهُمَا مَا وُرِيَا أَلْهُمَا مِنْ سَوْآتِيهِمَا وَقَالَ مَا نَهَاكُمَا رَبُّكُمَا أَنْ هَذِهِ أَشَّجْرَتِي إِلَّا أَنْ تَقُونَ مَلَاقَيْنِ أَوْ تَقُونَ مِنَ الْخَالِدِينَ But Satan whispered to them, to make apparent to them that which was amassed for them of their private parts. And he said, Your Lord did not forbid you this tree, except that you become angels or become of the immortal. Waqa samahuma inni lakuma laminan nasahin. And he swore to them, Indeed, I am to you from among the sincere advisers. Wuria means masked. So adihima means their private parts, that which should be hidden, or their shame. Ka samahuma means he swore to them. Adam and his wife were living happily in paradise. Then Shaitan whispered into their hearts to induce them to disobey the commandment. His aim was to drive them out of paradise. So he said to them that they have been forbidden from this tree just so that they do not become angels or live for, for an indefinite period. Some details of the same thing are described in Surah Taha, verse 120. The thing to reflect on from this is that Adam was living in paradise. So how did he fall into the trap of, shay of shaitan? And what kind of paradise is this in which shaitan is also there? Something for us to ponder upon. Let's move on to verse 22. فَذَلَّهُمَا بِهُرُورِ فَلَمَّا ذَاقَ أَشَّجَرَةَ بَدَتْ لَهُمَا سَوْآتُوهُمَا وَتَافِكَ يَقْسِفَادِ عَلَيْهِمَا مِنْ وَرَاقِ الْجَنَّةِ وَنَدَاهُمَا رَبُّهُمَا أَلَمْ أَنْهَاكُمَا أَنْ تِلْكُمَا أَشَّجَرَتِ وَأَقُلْ لَاكُمَا إِنَّ شَيْتَانَ لَاكُمَا أَدُوهُمْ مُبِينَ So he showed them through deception, and when they tasted of the tree, their private parts became apparent to them, and they began to fasten together over themselves from the leaves of paradise. And the Lord called to them, Did I not forbid you from that tree and tell you that Satan is to you a clear enemy? Fadallahuma means he indicated or showed them. Badat means became apparent. Yaksifani means fasten. Shaitan continued his efforts and persuaded them to disobey through various arguments. And when they tasted the forbidden tree, their private parts 
which were hidden from their eyes, became visible to them. The clothes of paradise were no more. Their comfort and peace were robbed, and they started to fasten the leaves of paradise over themselves. This is also mentioned in Surah Taha, verse 121. Then Allah said, Didn't I forbid you to go near this tree? And didn't I tell you that, sat that Satan is your clear enemy? Let's go on to verses 23 to 25. Kala Rabbana Dalamna Anfusana Wa Illam Tawfrilana Wa Tarhamna Lana Kunanna Minal Khasri. They said, Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves, and if you do not forgive us and have mercy upon us, we will surely be among the losers. Kala Ahabitu Badukum Libadin Adun Walakum Fil Ardi Mustaharun Wamataun Ila Heen. He said, Descend some of you to some others as enemies, and for you in the earth is a dwelling place and enjoyment for a time. Kala Fiha Dahyona Wa Fiha Damuduna Wa Minha Dukrajun. He said, Therein you will live and therein you will die, and from it you will be brought forth. Now both were very ashamed of what they had done. Adam admitted his mistake and asked for forgiveness and mercy. The words mentioned in verse 23 are known as a supplication of Adam, and it is a good practice to supplicate in these words in case of any mistake and ask for forgiveness. Adam's repentance was accepted, which is mentioned in Surah Taha, verse 122, where it says, Then their Lord chose them, paid attention to them, and guided them. An important thing to note is that knowledge is meaningless without divine guidance. Adam had knowledge, but no guidance, due to which he made mistakes. Adam and his wife were expelled from heaven and sent to earth, and told that they are enemies of each other. Now they have to stay in this land for a certain period of time, and they are given the opportunity to improve their condition and return to heaven again. Getting Allah's guidance and following it is mentioned in Surah Taha, verse 123, where it says, He said, Get down from it, all of you. You are enemies with each other. So if my guidance comes to you, then whoever follows my guidance will neither go astray nor be in trouble. We are all the children of Adam, and the way back to heaven for us is, con is conditioned by following the instructions of Allah in the Holy Quran, according to the Blessed Sunnah of the Holy Prophet. This concludes our segment on Ruku 2 of Surah Al-Araf. Let's briefly go over what we discussed. The history of Adam is actually the history of the children of Adam, and that is us. The proof of this is the fact that we are present here in this world at this time. Allah has provided us with all kinds of resources. This includes knowledge, guidance, and other necessities of life. Whoever uses these resources according to the laws of Allah, then he makes his life a means of service and does good to the creation of God. Whoever violates these laws, then his life is only for himself and other creatures, and it becomes a cause of evil. Adam recognized his mistake. He repented and corrected his life according to the instructions of Allah, and he returned to paradise. This is the path to success for all of us. May Allah grant us the ability to understand the Holy Qur'an and its true meanings in light of the life and guidance of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. Thank you for joining us for this segment. Until next time. Sadaqullahul aliyul azim. Allah speaks the truth, the exalted, the great. Sallallahu ta'ala ala habibihi Muhammadiyu wa alihi wa sallam.